Hi everyone and welcome to this week's DuckSoup webinar on how to get started with DuckSoup Pro. Uh, Giles Garnett, the Head of Professional Services, is a presenter of this week's webinar. Live chat is monitored by me, Jen, the Head of Customer Support. And at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A with Giles. So thank you for joining us today and let's start our webinar. Thank you, Jen. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone joining today's DuckSuit webinar, be that live or recorded. Happy to welcome you all on the webinar today. And I understand we have a mixture of long-term DuckSuit users and uh, some relatively new users as well. Uh, to introduce myself uh, to those who don't know me or to uh, those who are new to DuckSuit, my name is Giles Garnett. I am Head of Professional Services here at DuckSoup. I've been presenting the webinars for DuckSoup for the last year or so, and um, I also run the booster and technical calls and have also been recently assisting with some of the support calls as well. Now, every six months or so, we revisit some of our standard topics in, in the webinar series. And today we're going to go to go back to basics and I'll be pre presenting uh, getting started with DuckSoup Pro. So this may be a refresher for some of our existing users or indeed a useful introduction or insights for our new users. I will present a few slides to start with, and then we'll go through a live demo so you can see the DuckSoup robot in action. And uh, I will touch on all of the DuckSoup Pro functionality and indeed cover some of the uh, also recently introduced features. As you're aware, DuckSoup is constantly evolving and changing based upon the requirements of our customers and also uh, in line with any changes that happen within the LinkedIn uh, platform. While I'm talking and presenting, Jin, as you've uh, just heard, our Head of Customer Support at DuckSoup will be doing her best to answer your questions on the web chat. As always, please do try to keep the questions on topic so they are useful for the entire audience. Uh, you can always visit the DuckSoup support pages and use the live chat function there if you have other questions. As always, the webinar today will be recorded and available to you all. So those who registered will get an automatic link. And later on, the recording will also be made available on our website and on the DuckSoup YouTube channel alongside all our previous content. So, on with the show. DuckSoup helps over 60,000 LinkedIn users around the globe to automate lead generation, sales, and marketing tasks every day. But once you've made the decision to go with a, with a certain tool, we understand it's necessary to invest a little bit of time to make sure you understand how it works and to ensure you're getting the best out of it. And, and that's the reason for these webinars, to try and make this a little bit easier for our users. Making time for quality outreach, networking and lead generation can be one of the biggest hurdles to growing your business. So as a resource, um, LinkedIn is second to none when it comes to business to business, business to business networking. As you can see from the slide on the screen now, um, using automation on this platform can give you and your business the ability to produce better lead gen results without having to invest time in traditional outreach and sales. So, as you have made the decision to use automation, it's in paramount importance that you put effort into your LinkedIn profile. Your profile page is your advert, and there are many online guides and tips as to how to pimp your profile. Here are some, here's some advice that we've uh, been refreshing over the, uh, the previous years. It's in paramount importance you have a professional photo and relevant background, uh, make use of that space. Focus your efforts on the headline, what you can do for people rather than maybe just your job. Uh, update your relevant skills and experience, make use of the endorsements. And then also, as well as making sure your profile is up to date, share and comment and be an active member of the LinkedIn community. All these things will help towards improving uh, your reputation within the LinkedIn environment. From a high level perspective, DuckSoup Pro will allow you to carry out the following things. You can scan and visit profiles and we'll come on to the difference between scanning and visiting later. You can organize your potential leads by making use of the DuckSoup tagging function so that you have a tagging function within DuckSoup that you can use. Um, to categorize your contacts. You can connect with LinkedIn profiles by sending personalized messages and indeed connection requests. And then you can engage and re-engage with LinkedIn prospects by making use of the facilities within DuckSoup. 
So the features I'm going to, uh, to demonstrate today, these are some of the highlights, is what I'm going to demo shortly. We're going to look at some search criteria, so finding some targets or some lists within LinkedIn, something that we can do something with, uh, with DuckSoup. We'll look at carrying out visits to profiles. We'll look, out, send, look at sending some connection requests. We'll also look at how you can message your first degree connections. We'll also look at how you can tag profiles, both manually and automatic. Uh, we'll look at the skipping rules because you want to make the best use you can of your LinkedIn profile views and you don't want to waste profile views perhaps on, on uh, profiles that aren't interesting to you. We'll look at the, the, the difference between scanning and downloading, well, sorry, the use of scanning, downloading and revisiting, as I mentioned earlier, the scanning function and the visiting function, and I'll explain the difference between those. And I'll also touch later upon account safety, uh, throttling and how to use the planner to control what the robot does on your behalf. It's very important to remember the DuckSoup robot is there to mimic human behavior. So what we're trying to do is take the repetitive effort out of your everyday work and be able to free you up to spend more time on adding value uh, to your uh, lead generation activities. So first of all, first thing you need to do is make sure you have installed uh, DuckSoup uh, for lead, uh, for LinkedIn automation, sorry, falling over my words. Um, you can download DuckSoup from the Chrome store. It is also available for other browsers. Um, if you look on our support pages, you can get information there. Personally, I have successfully tried Opera, Yandex, and Brave, but the vast majority of our users uh, use uh, Chrome. Uh, you do need a Google Chrome account in order to be able to do this. So to be able to download the, the software, you need a Chrome account. Um, you can create a Chrome account without having to create a Gmail account. And if you look on the support pay pages of uh, Google, then you can find out how to do that. You log on to your Chrome account within Chrome, and then you can install the extension. And as you can see here, I have the extension uh, installed here within my browser. The red duck here in the top, that means I have DuckSoup Pro. There is a, a support article on our on our knowledge base, which explains the various colors, and we may touch on those as I go through the demo uh, in the coming minutes. So first of all, we want to then open, we have, our, we have our extension installed, and now I want to go to my LinkedIn profile in order to carry out some activities using Duck Soup. Now, before we actually carry out any activities, we're gonna have a quick look under the bonnet of duck soup and have an, I'll explain all the various options that are available to you. We'll click on the duck soup icon and that provides us with a drop down menu here as to all the various options that we have to be able to, to use duck soup. And if we go to our options button here in the top right hand corner, that will open us a new browser tab, which gives us the uh, under the sort of the, the engine room of duck soup and gives us all of the, the settings and options that are available to us. Hopefully the screen is clearer this week. We've tried to improve the quality of the uh, of the uh, the live demo, so hopefully it's not too blurred for every, everyone this week. We've been working with uh, with Demio to try and improve that. So here, DuckSoup Pro, first tab we have, we can define what automated actions we would like to be carried out on our behalf during an auto visit of profiles. And as you can see here, we have a number of options. First and most obvious, is to send connection requests to second and third degree connections during a visit. And that can be using standard LinkedIn or Sales Navigator. And you then also have the option to include a personalized message with your connection request. This is recommended. It vastly increases the chances of somebody accepting your invitation. And what we have here is the ability to enter some text. You are limited to 300 characters. That's a LinkedIn limitation. And you can use these markers here below to make your message look personalized. It's worth bearing in mind that if you have, for example, a message that's 296 characters long, for example, and somebody's got a long first name, your message may be truncated. So make sure you think about the, um, 
the uh, personal the, the the personalization and the auto fields that you're using here in the construction of your message. There are some uh, posts within our uh, on, on our blog page as to how to construct different types of messages for different target audiences and different strategies you can follow. If you have a look through the blog page, uh, you will uh, be able to find those articles uh, there. So that's the most obvious use for, for DuckSoup Pro is for outreach, for growing your network and sending these connection requests. I will show this in action a little bit later, but we'll go through the entire menu first. Secondly, we can also ask DuckSoup to automatically cancel pending connection requests. And this is a new feature that was introduced about 10 days ago. And if you have this option uh, enabled, then periodically DuckSoup will open your outstanding connections page and withdraw anybody, anybody that's over a certain, uh, a certain number of days. And you can define this um, accordingly. This is uh, a field that you can change based upon your requirements. As well as being able to outreach to new connections, you can send messages to your existing network, your existing first degree connections within LinkedIn. And you can do this use, do, using DuckSoup as well. Um, both LinkedIn, uh, standard LinkedIn and Sales Navigator. And one of the differences here, here is that because these people are first degree connections, you have 3000 characters uh, available to you on your message. And this therefore enables you to have a much greater scope for outreach, for publicity, for example. So you have this option here, the same markers are available as well. So you can also make these messages look personalized. We go further down the list, you can also use DuckSoup to send in-mails to second and third degree connections using um, Sales Navigator. Uh, you have a limited number of in-mail credit, in credits per month. And personally, I use my in-mails um, manually because I don't want to burn through those credits too quickly, but you can use them with DuckSoup as well if you would like. You can also ask DuckSoup to follow profiles using standard LinkedIn. So this would mean that those uh, any posts from those profiles would appear higher up within your newsfeed. You can also use DuckSoup to automatically disconnect from profiles in your network using standard LinkedIn. So if you have a large network, um, so for example, you have a, a, an upper limit of 30,000 in your first degree connections. So if you're reaching that sort of number and you need to clear it out, you could carry out a search within your first degree network and then ask DuckSoup to carry out an auto visit to those profiles with this enabled to therefore disconnect and reduce the size of your first degree network. You can also use DuckSoup to uh, save a profile as a lead using Sales Navigator. And as well as that, you can download profiles as a PDF using standard LinkedIn. Um, when you're visiting first degree connections within standard LinkedIn only, you can also ask DuckSoup to auto endorse uh, and you can choose how many skills you would like to endorse during those visits. Um, and then we'll come back onto this later, this auto tagging. You can tag profiles when auto visiting using DuckSoup. So you can start to um, label all of your, uh, all of the profiles that you visit. So you can search and filter by those later. Another new feature which was introduced around 10 days ago was the ability here to exclude profiles with fewer than so many connections. And this is, you can define this as uh, to as few or as many as you want. So when DuckSoup carries out a visit to a profile, it looks to see how many first degree connections it has. And you can say, well, actually, I'm only interested in, pe in, in people with a large network already. And that helps you to, to narrow down your, your target audience a little bit. So those are the automated actions here. Um, we'll go through the rest of these along the top very briefly now uh, and just go through all of them and explain them. And then we'll do some actual visits and you can see the robot in action. Under the skipping tab, these are mostly self-explanatory, um, and these are the default settings. So skip if outside of your network. So if a profile is beyond a third degree connection, you cannot usually see those details unless they have uh, an open profile. Uh, so you don't want to waste uh, profile visits on people whose details you can't see. Um, most of the rest of this is self-explanatory. Um, this one here is contentious. Skip if the profile photo is blank. We tend to believe that if there's no profile photograph, um, then the person is not necessarily particularly active on LinkedIn and therefore may not be interesting. But that may change, that may be different depending on what industry you're working in. Now, if you've been, uh, if you've been tagging profiles as you go through, you can also put these tags in here and make sure that you're not revisiting the same profiles again and again. So if you're running a campaign and tagging profiles accordingly, 
you can put this uh, within this field here. And then also using um, regular expressions, you can also choose to exclude certain uh, text strings from profiles. So perhaps you wouldn't want to uh, visit the profiles of people who work at perhaps a competitor or within a certain organization. And DuckSoup will do its best to find those text strings and skip those profiles if you have this enabled and you, you put in the appropriate uh, expression here. You also have the history skipper here. Uh, so you can specify how many days a profile should be skipped when auto visiting, and you can define this according to whatever you want. So if you're reaching, if you're outreaching for new uh, new connections, then perhaps you would want to skip profiles in the last month or three months, for example. Um, however, if you're sending out uh, messages to your first degree network and you may have been visiting those profiles recently, then you probably would want to uh, change that uh, that setting to uh, one of the uh, maybe never skipping profiles or, or skipping profiles in the last 24 hours, for example. So that, that's a, uh, you can define that and, and make that your own choice there. Very important, under throttling. Let's change this to where we, where we should, where the, uh, the standard is. I believe that's the, the default setting. Very important. The speed of the robot and how fast the robot runs is very important because you don't want LinkedIn to think there's any suspicious activity on your uh, account. So here you can decide how quickly you want the robot to run on your behalf. And remember, we're trying to get it to mimic human behavior. So visiting profiles, if you've got between 25 and 125 per hour, it's not going to be the same speed all the time. So there is a degree or there's no pattern to, that can be detected. This is all, def uh, you can define this all yourself. You can increase these time limits here accordingly to make it seem even more random. And then under the daily limits here, if you leave the uh, the settings as they are here, then DuckSoup will look as to whether you, as, what sort of uh, LinkedIn accounts you've got and how big your network is and adapt its behavior accordingly. Um, account safety is of paramount importance to us um, and of course to yourselves. Your, your, uh, your LinkedIn profile is probably a very important part of your lead generation activities for your business. So the last thing you want to do is uh, get any warnings from LinkedIn or, or have any restrictions placed upon your account. So you do have the abilities to, to, to change this if you want. And as you can see here from the, the profile visits, if you have a free LinkedIn account, you're perfectly okay to visit up to 100 visits per day without any problems. Business Plus 250, Sales Navigator 500. That would be expected behavior from those types of accounts. Um, we recommend that you don't try to increase your first degree network by more than 5% per day. It's a very important number. But of course, that also depends upon how successful you are with your outreach. So if you're achieving maybe a 5 or 10% uh, success rate in uh, converting invitations to new connections, then that would be seen by LinkedIn as possibly that you're spamming people, you're not getting a high level of uh, acceptance, and therefore would be more suspicious activity thought of on your account. If you're achieving 30, 40% acceptance rate, then that would be uh, a much, much more positive and, and therefore your outstanding invites would not grow so quickly. So it very much depends on the size of your network and uh, all sorts of other factors as to, uh, as to how you wish to proceed here. Always start the robot slowly, always build up slowly, run it for a couple of weeks before changing any settings and make sure that uh, everything is running smoothly, et cetera, et cetera. The throttling here, if you think about the throttling and visiting maybe 100 profiles per day and you've got it on the slowest setting, the robot doesn't need to run for very, very many hours in the day for you to be able to reach your, uh, your targets. And in conjunction with that, we won't look at the Connect tab because that is all uh, turbo features. In conjunction with that, you have the planner, which basically here you can zoom out a little bit so you can hopefully see that a bit clearer. There we go. Um, here you can see... Uh, exact, you can define exactly when you want the robots to run on your behalf. And as you can see from these, uh, these settings here, I work Tuesday nights and Thursday nights here in Europe to cover US times. So that's why my robot is configured to run through till 2, 2 a.m. on Wednesdays and Friday mornings. Um, but this is where you can decide when you're happy for the robots to carry out activity on your behalf. This is also very useful from an account safety point of view, because while the robot is running, you don't want to be too active on LinkedIn. And that's because you don't want LinkedIn to see that there's 
perhaps more than one person active on your account at any one time. Now remember, standard LinkedIn and Sales Navigator are also seen as separate uh, systems. So if you have the robot running on Sales Navigator, for example, you are okay to perform actions on standard LinkedIn and vice versa. But you can use the planner to segregate your work uh, day and decide on maybe certain hours when you're doing manual activities on LinkedIn and when you're having automation run on LinkedIn. Uh, for the completeness, under the user tab, you would find your credentials relating to your Chrome account uh, or any external license key. And then this is uh, basically the, uh, the browser settings for when you're downloading uh, data, et cetera, et cetera. We'll come on to that a little bit later. So what we want to do now is actually show you the robot in action. And what we'll notice here is what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to carry out some auto visits to some profiles and purely... Uh, add some tags to them so that we can see people who have been tagged with a profile. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to enable this one here and got here this October Pro Webinar tag here. And we're going to go back to LinkedIn. And at the moment, you can see here the Duck Soup icon is red. That means the Duck Soup is ready to go. I've got Duck Soup Pro, but it hasn't identified that I can do anything that's on the screen. What I'm going to do then is look for some people. I'm going to come up with a, find a list within LinkedIn. We call them lists. And there's a very good article uh, in our blog posts. If you look up lists within blog posts, there's a, a good article there defining all the different types of lists you can find within, within LinkedIn. I'm going to do an IT manager job, uh, IT manager people search very briefly here within standard LinkedIn. And you can see here, this comes up with 13.9 million results which is great, but actually not realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and narrow this down a little bit. We're going to change the connections to if the any of these buttons work. For some reason, we're not getting any action there. Let's try reloading the page. Problem with doing a live demo, it doesn't always work first time. So there we go. Hopefully we now get the yeah, we go. We'll look at just second degree connections. And there we go. We're now down to 363,000 results, which is okay, but it's still far too many. And the reason for that is, and this may be a limitation you're aware of, not sure, within standard LinkedIn, uh, you, uh, LinkedIn will only ever show you the first 100 pages of any search result. And you only get 10 results so, per page, so you only actually get the first 1,000 results. So there's 362,000 results here that I can't see. If you do this in Sales Navigator, it's similar, but you get 25 results per page and 100 pages, so two and a half thousand. So when you're carrying out your searches within LinkedIn, try and get under those thresholds because then you know you can see all of the people uh, that you're looking for or all of the people in the search results. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for people who are local to me here, here in uh, Breda in the Netherlands. And let's see if we can narrow this search result down a little bit more down to, uh, oh, we're down to about a thousand. So that'll do for now. Um, and what I've got here now is a list. And what you can see here on the right-hand side is the DuckSoup icon has turned green. So DuckSoup has identified what's on the screen now as a list that I can do something with. Now, um, I said just now I was going to carry out uh, some auto visits to these people and just tag them for my own use. If I wanted to, I could also uh, send them a connection request and populate my message here. If we have time towards the end, then we'll try and do that as well. But what I wanna do is just show you what happens when I auto visit and tag them as I visit them. So that's the only option I'm gonna have enabled there. Here's my list. Um, one thing I will do is I will, for demo purposes, we'll speed the robot up a little bit so we actually get to see something happen. Let's change that, there we go there and what we'll do we'll ask the duck soup just to purely visit a profile and what you get then is a confirmation box of some things that you want to happen now one thing you can do with duck soup as well is you can get duck soup to look for email addresses other than your first degree connections for that you need to purchase duck soup points and if you're interested later on in the q a or if i have time towards the end of the demo i can show you how that is uh, how that system works um I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just purely going to carry out an auto visit and I'm going to tag these people. So let's press OK and we can see the robot uh, in action. So what will happen now is duck soup. The duck soup icon turns blue. That means it's working. Um, it'll probably reload the page in a second. There we go. 
And everything you can see now happening is the robot uh, carrying out this on my behalf. It's found some data here. It's going to pause for a few seconds based upon the throttling speeds. Always takes longer when you're watching. I'm waiting for it. So it's now going to uh, start at the, the top of the list. It's going to visit Yoka. Um, it's opened his profile here in the bottom right hand corner. It's got profile data. It's gathering contact information as far as it can see. It's going to hopefully apply the auto tag. We'll just wait for it a second. There we go. Tagged October Pro webinar saved. And then it's going to close this profile um, in a second and then move on to the next one. And that's basically the system, the way that Duck Soup works. It, uh, if you, you have to keep the page open that you're running it on, and uh, you can then go off and work in, in another tab or in another application, for example, and you can leave that running in the background. It will continue to work its way through the list that you have defined that's on screen um, and carry out the automated actions based upon your throttling, your planner, and your daily limits. At some point, it'll reach its maximum for the day, for the day and we'll go into snooze mode. And then, yeah, uh, it'll pick off from where it started, from where it left off. Uh, it'll start from where it uh, finished the previous day at the next moment uh, in the calendar. As long as you keep that tab open, your computer needs to be on and the tab needs to be open. Of course, you can close it down overnight if you if you want to, if you've got the, the planner running. But as, yeah, if you have the settings for it to open the same page, uh, Chrome to open the same pages, as when you, where you were before, then it'll just carry on from where it's left off. So what we've seen here is DuckSoup is visiting some profiles and adding some tags to them. And what we can do now is we can have a look at those tags by going to, um, let's open a new tab and let's go to DuckSoup icon here. We can now do a search by tag. Now what I've got to try and do now is remember what the tag was that I had applied. I have now completely forgotten because I was talking. There we are, October Pro Webinar. Here under the search tag uh, option with DuckSoup, we can now um, have a look and see exactly what profiles I have tagged with that particular tag. And here we go, there's the first two that I tagged. And I could then also run DuckSoup activities from here. I've got the robot running on another screen at the moment, so I wouldn't run two versions of the robot at once. You need one version of the robot per um, LinkedIn profile, one, one license per profile, and you will only run one version of the robot on a profile at any one time, otherwise you could end up with the data pollution. So that's how tagging works. You can see that working there. Uh, we'll stop the robot there for a second. Now, as you can see here in the top right-hand corner, every time I've visited a profile, the ticker, the, the, the counter has gone up here, and that's because every visit that you carry out uh, data is being uh, gathered on your behalf. So every visit that you carry out to a first degree, a second degree, third degree profile, DuckSoup is collecting that data, and you can later on download that data using this, uh, this button here. Before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to scan a list and what you can do with scanning. So you can run DuckSoup here from a search result like we've done here. And before we do this, I'm actually gonna clear my data back to zero so we can see this happening uh, live. So I've reset the counter to zero, so I've got rid of all my cached data. What I'm gonna do now is rather than, now I could have been visiting these profiles like I was then, I could have been visiting and sending connection requests to these profiles, I didn't do that, um, but that would be very easy to do. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scan profiles. And what scanning profiles does, it takes whatever list is on the page and it gathers some high level data against that profile as it goes. If I press the scan button, we'll see that uh, Duck Soup will once again reload the page and very quickly gather the data relating to the profiles that are there on the page. Um, hopefully this will go fairly quickly. It'll reload. And what it'll do, because you're not visiting any actual profiles using scanning, you're not, that's not, it doesn't count against your, uh, your LinkedIn usage. So you're not actually clicking on any profiles, you are purely asking the robot to scroll through a search result or a list of people on the screen. I'm just gonna wait for the ticker to go up here and we'll get a bit more data hopefully. There we are, it's got the first page. And uh, yeah, that'll do for now.
Um, if I left this to run, I could let this go through the entire list and it would go through it fairly quickly because I think I've got it set to go fast. So it would go through it approximately 10 pages per minute um, and would, uh, would gather this data fairly quickly. What I want to do is just show you uh, what this data looks like um, once, you, uh, once you download it. So I'm going to stop the robot there a second. If I click on the download data button now, you can see here under the scan data, I've got two pages worth of data there. That creates me a CSV file here, which of course appears on my other screen. There we go. And what you can see here, we get some high level data against each profile. So we end up with um, the ID number. So that's the database ID number there, the LinkedIn database ID against the profile, the time that I've scanned the profile, the URL of the profile, first name, last name, job title and their location. Now you get different amounts of data depending on where you scan these profiles. So if you did this in Sales Navigator, you'd get different data. If you do it from an alumni list, you get different data. But what I wanted to do here is just show you get, you can have this list here and you can also uh, then edit this list uh, and save it. It has to be as a CSV file. You can do this with all sorts of different lists. For example, you could scan your first degree connections um, and then edit the list down to carry out auto visits to your first degree uh, connections and send them messages during those auto visits. So here we are, we've got this list here. We'll save that. And the way that you use DuckSoup to revisit a list is you go to your DuckSoup icon, you go down the bottom here to the revisit data button. And from here, you can upload your CSV file. So here we can see that list of people uh, that I just had on the screen in that CSV file. And there's enough data here for DuckSoup to be able to carry out auto visits to these people. There we are. The DuckSoup icon has turned green and I can now carry out auto visits to the people that are on this page here. There is also the facility to be able to add additional columns to that CSV file for personalization, further personalization of messaging. If I just very quickly show you here, um, you see here under either under the second and third degree connections, you see these P1 to P5 values. You can put custom values in those columns so you would create extra columns, P1 to P2, P3, P4, P5, et cetera. And you can then add extra text into those columns. We did uh, a webinar covering that about uh, two months ago um, using uh, custom values, especially for non English speakers where you want different flavors of messages uh, depending on the gender of your target audience. And th those fields are available when sending connection requests or when sending personalized messages to first degree connections. You can use those, uh, those values there. Um, let me just check my list to make sure I've gone through everything. Okay, one thing I was going to show you was very quickly how to purchase duck soup points. So if you're looking to gather email addresses of second and third degree connections, you go to your ducks dash, which is the bottom right hand corner here of the drop down box that opens up a new tab here. Here you can look at uh, various information. And here in the duck store, you can see here exactly how to purchase duck soup points to gather email addresses. Now, once people are at first degree connection, you can usually see their email address. If they're a second or third degree connection, it is possible for you to ask uh, the duck soup robot to try and find the email addresses of people and you can buy credits uh, here um, through the ducks store. I think that's everything I was going to cover. Um, I'm sure Jin's now going to point out to uh, some other things that I've perhaps missed, but there's an awful lot of information there and I'm aware I've been going for half, more than half an hour. So let's go back to the slides very quickly. We've looked at search criteria, tag targeting and finding lists. There are lots of options there. Do look up in the blog posts, the, the one about lists that give you lots of different ideas about alumni lists, people who've reacted to posts, all sorts. How to carry out visits. We didn't do any connection requests. And one of the, one of the things that we I may do uh, during the QA, uh, a useful thing is being able to become part of uh, groups within LinkedIn. That gives you access to a lot of people and you can send connection requests to people within groups very easily. Um, the other thing uh, is if you've got a Sales Navigator account, one of the big differences is you can look at the members of a group without being a member of it. In standard LinkedIn, you have to be a member of a group to see the population. 
with Sales Navigator, you can look at the population of a discussion group without being a, a, a member of that. How to message first degree connections. We've, we've, we've touched on that by carrying out an auto visit and having that option enabled. How to tag profiles. Didn't show you how to manually tag profiles, so let's very quickly go back to that. So if I now open, for example, um, let's open, let's open my profile. That's probably the easiest one. Um, so if we go to my profile here, you'll see here whenever you open a profile within within LinkedIn uh, with Duck Soup with the Duck Soup uh, robot running. In a second, here we go. You get this little pop out box here, and you see all of these tags here. If I was to now add, for example, the October one, uh, the October demo, pro demo, I could do that here. These are other ones here. You can manually add and remove uh, tags accordingly here, as well as doing it uh, automatically during visits as well. One thing to say as well to anybody, if you would like to send me a connection request, please do. Um, I am on LinkedIn. It's always nice to be linked to and connect with people who are using Duck Soup. Um, so yeah, feel free to send me a connection request if you would like. So we've looked at skipping. Uh, let's go back to there. We've looked at tagging, we've looked at skipping, we've looked at scanning, downloading, and revisiting, and we've talked about account safety, throttling, and the planner. So those are the things that I wanted to get across to you, all the basic functionality there of, uh, of LinkedIn Pro. Some coming upcoming webinars. In two weeks' time, uh, we're going to be doing a similar webinar as this one, but getting started with DuckSoup Turbo. So we'll be looking at follow-up messages and how to integrate into other systems using uh, uh, Zapier, Integromat, and the, 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 the things with Pipedrive, for example. And then in November, we've got uh, an interesting uh, uh, set of uh, webinars coming up. Some of the dates are just being finalized, but we'll be covering the Pipedrive integration, which has been uh, updated and refined due to some customer requests, little changes there. Um, and we'll also be looking at some Integromat um, solutions there. So as an alternative to Zapier, that's going to be coming up in November. As always, I do my plug for the booster and the technical session. So if you're a new user to, to DuckSoup and need a, an extra uh, bit of training, perhaps, or some extra consultancy, uh, a booster session is the one for you there to help you set up your configuration and understand everything. If you're slightly more technical and need more help with uh, your process and, and how to uh, how to build uh, a solution, perhaps in integrating into other systems, and the technical session would be the uh, would be the session you would require there. Some useful links here: our homepage, the blog posts. You can find all of these on on the website. Um, the Facebook page is incredibly active. There's a very active community there, and our support team also uh, uh, are regularly on there as well. So uh, make use of that as well. The community is very active. Questions? Jin? Questions, actually. Do you mean that you've managed to answer all the questions that there were? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. All right. In that case, I will say goodbye and hand over to Jin to, to sign off. Uh, attending and hope to see you very soon. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact DuckSoup support. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>